Hello everyone, this is the day 9 of the flow designer training. In this day we will talk about the inline scripting in the flow designer. Although our main motto in the flow designer is that no code, low code, but still in there are some situations where without coding it is not possible to fulfill our requirement. In that case we can still use our inline scripting in the flow designer. But before using the inline scripting there are certain rules and regulation we should follow and that we are going to discuss in our today's sessions and then we'll also discuss about that uh, how we can do this inline scripting in the flow design so this is the service now documentation and in this documentation we are talking about that inline scripting in the flow designer if you scroll down that um, before you do uh, inline scripting there should be certain consideration we should uh, use that so write inline scripting for small non-reusable logic. So if something is very reusable, then do not write the inline scripting. But if it is non-reusable and small line of code, then you can use this uh, inline scripting. Then we have a transform function that we have discussed in our earlier video. So before using this inline scripting, check that is there any transform function is available in our system or not. Then we have a um, uh, custom action that we are going to talk about our next video like how we can create the custom action. Before you use the inline scripting, check that is there any possibility to use that custom actions so that you can use that custom action or maybe subflow. So before you create or before you use the inline scripting, these are the things you should uh, you know keep in mind in our sense. So let's think about that what we are going to build in our today's sessions. So in today's sessions, what we are going to build that we are going to update a subflow that subflow we have created earlier and that subflow normally create a change request. So in previously, we created a subflow that normally uh, create a change request via UI action. From the UI action, the moment you click that create change request, it call a subflow and that subflow normally create a change request. So that subflow we are going to update that and now what we are going to do that in the subflow, whenever the change will be created, we are going to set that plan start date equal to current, uh, you know, date. So plan start date, we are going to set that current start date. How we are going to do that, that's the one thing. Secondly, we are setting this short description of the change from an input parameter, right? In this input parameter, what we are going to do that, we are going to take only 15 character and if somebody pass more than 15 character, we'll put dot 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 three dot so 15 character after that we'll, we are going to put the three dot so that is might be our requirement that we have received from our client and that in that case we are going to implement our inline scripting because that is not possible via transform function or any simple thing so that we are going to build in our uh, today's session so let's go back to the service now and implement that so this is our service now demo instance and in this demo instance if you type the flow designer and you can see the flow designer module and if you click that the flow designer module will be open now if i go to the subflow that subflow that we have created in earlier sessions will be visible called create change request so if i open this create change request subflow this subflow is need input parameter and then based on this input parameter it create a change request and it update the change request with this some field value called um, assignment group this is the purpose of this flow if I click the test, what will be happen? It will take this information and it will create a simple change request. So let's click the run test. And if I click that view uh, test result, you will be able to see it's create a change request. So this is uh, create a change request. Let's see first requirement. In this first requirement, what we want uh, in this change request, the moment we click this test change request or the moment we call this subflow, it should set the change request planned uh, start date equal to today's date. So it said date and time field. So we need to be past current date and time in this uh, state. How can we do that? So that's the first requirement. To fulfill this first requirement, if you go here and you can see this is the out of box create emergency change request uh, actions. It does not have any uh, input parameter called uh, plan start date what we can do we can click this update change request in this update change request we can uh, update our change request that has, that has been created in our earlier step here we are updating that assignment group now here we can set the plan start date so we'll say that planned so if you select the plan start date we can set any planned start date now here is the thing the plan start date is a dynamic thing and we need to be set current date 
if we click this calendar we can set any fixed date or if it is something deriving from previous day we can dot talk and then do that like if it is coming from input parameter we can do that but if we want to set current date without scripting that little difficult to do that we have a inline scripting option here if you click that you will be able to see a toggling option where you can write the script and that can give you desired result so if you click that you will be able to find out that some scripting part and it's have some sample scripting written here and if you see the line number six it's mentioning the return short description nothing but it means that whatever scripting you want to do do the scripting and finally you return the value and that value will be set to this field okay so if if i uncomment that the plan start date value will be come from the script so whatever scripting you need to be right write that and finally you return the value so that it can set that field value. So if you recall that PPT, I have mentioned that it is for the short uh, type of script. So if you want to write small code, then you can use the inline scripting. So how do we set or how do we get current date time? As we know that, let's say that I am declaring a variable called var and then c date which will uh, store the current date time. Now question is how we can get current date time. We have a API called new client date time that return current date and time, right? And that will store into the C data. Now what we'll do, we'll return that. So we'll return, as I mentioned that, we need to be return that value so that it can store or it can set this value. So we use the glide date and time functions and then with the help of glide and date time function, it return the current date and time and that current date and time we are going to return in our that particular field. So let's save that and test that. So once we put this and let's say that I'm putting that and click run test, we should be able to get a change which has been created with that plan start date. So if I click here and then if I open this change in a new window, I should be able to see the plan start date equal to current. You can see it said the current date and time, which is nothing but just now. So in this way, you can write our inline scripting, right? So you can open that and you can see I have write some code. That's the reason it's saying that scripted explain to edit. So you can click here and you can see that code. So this value plan start date value which coming from the script, not from the pillar or not from somewhere else. Now if you see this second requirement, the second requirement is the set short description only 15 character, right? So we need to be take a value and that should be 15 character. If it is more than 15 character, we should put the 15 character, then these three or four dots. So that is our requirement, next requirement. So let's go and fulfill that. So to fulfill the second requirement, like putting that 15 character um, in a first place, then dot, 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 what we are going to do that first let's open this uh, activity and if you can see this activity or this action this action need a short description as the input parameter you can see this is coming from um, input parameter right what we will do we are going to create a variable so yes we can also create a variable under this flow or subflow how we can create the variable let's first see that and then we'll discuss further so first thing we are going to create a variable so we'll go and then we'll click here call flow variable and we are going to create a variable. So we'll click the plus sign and then we are going to create the variables call, let's say that in our case, the variable name called short description. So this is our variable level and the name will automatically populate it and it's a string variable. So we created this variable. What we are going to do that first, we are going to assign these variables value with this input parameter so we'll click the plus sign go to the flow logic and then here we have a we have action called set flow variable we'll select that and then here we'll click the plus sign and then we'll pick this short description and what this is the variable name and what is the value the value should be come from the input parameter we'll select that so we have created a variable and that variables value set as a short description which is coming from the input parameter all right, so we created a variable and that variables uh, value set by this input parameter. Now we'll click that in this create emergency change and instead of directly 
setting this value from this sort description input parameter will remove that and here we'll write the script so first thing first in that case we need to be checked that the length of the character if it is more than 15 character then only you should put triple dot if it is less than uh, 15 character we are going to set as it is right so how do we get this value so we are going to fetch this value from this variable so first let's say that i'll declare call var short description equal to fd data so this fd underscore data is the starting point or to fetching point where we can write the code so then dot and you can see that we have options called flow var we'll select that then dot we are going to uh, select this short underscore description variable so we are going to fetch these uh, variables called short descriptions from this flow variable and in this way we can store our short description here now next we need to check the length so we'll say that if sd it means that short description dot length is more than 15 character then we are going to do certain things right else will return as it is so we'll say that else will return sd so this is the small code we have written now the question is that what we are going to do that so if it is more than 15 character what we'll do we'll say the return and then sd dot substring there is a method called substring that cut down that character so let's say that i'm going to cut down 0 to 15 character plus after that what i'll do i'll put triple dot or four dot whatever i needed i can put that so let's understand one more time this short description uh, i am going to set that change short description i am going to set that first i am going to store this in a variable and that variable value i am checking that if that value is more than 15 character i'll do a substring and then we'll put 0 comma 15 so that i can concatenate the 15 character then i will plus and triple dot else i will return the complete text so this is the script i have written here you might be noticed that I am giving you very what uh, uh, you know scenario, uh, but I just want to show you that how we can do these things in our inline script. So let's test that and see. So if I click this test right now, and then let's say that short description is the two or three character and description is something like that and click run test. It should set uh, our change short description as, as it is. So if I open that, I can see the variable value is set AAA. This is the variable. And if I open this change, let's say that I'm opening this change, it said that triple A. Now let's put that more than 15 character. So let's put that more than 15 character. I put, uh, you know, repeated that and more than 15 character. And let's run that. Open this flow. And then this time open this change request and see what should be our value. So let's open that. And you can see after 15 character it put dot 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 so this way you can fulfill your requirement by inline scripting one more thing i just want to show you guys that if you see this is the subflow and this subflow is called from a flow right so let's go back and you can see under this subflow there is a triple dot if you click that uh, there is an option called show related flow if you click that all this flow that is used uh, this subflow is going to be show here so you can find out that which flow is getting used here so this way you can write the inline scripting so that's it for today if you have any uh, question let me know in my comment section thank you very much have a great day